All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, if you have not signed in, please do sign in. This is how we get paid some money. Um, so I'll start it here and, and just go ahead and pass it on back. Um, I'm Sarah Stainworth, for those of you who I may not have met yet. And I just wanted to update us on uh, some of the stuff that's been happening this past month. Uh, I haven't been entirely with it, so I'm sure I'm missing a lot of stuff. And Isaac, who is wonderful, has a Twitter account that's full of everything that I've missed. So hit that up. It's linked on the Gmods website. Yeah. It's just it's just Gmods. Search Gmods on Twitter. Find yeah. It. Um, so first off, uh, um, we've been hearing a lot about gene drives, and here's a new alternative that is actually not all that new. Um, the Wolbachia bacteria has been We've talked about it before, that you can use it to sterilize mosquitoes. This group uses it to prevent um, the replication of different viruses. So it's primarily been used in dengue uh, because this was before Zika. And they've already done uh, some preliminary field trials in areas of about 10,000 people. Uh, they've now been approved to do large-scale trials in Rio de Janeiro and Fellow. Um, so these will happen next year, and they're looking at not just dengue, but they're also seeing how effective this is with other viruses, including Zika. Um, and this is the organization that's Eliminate Dengue. They've got funding from the U.S., the U.K., the Gates Foundation. Um, in other news, these other uh, types of trials are also being conducted by Mosquito Mate. They've just been approved to start a trial in March in the Florida Keys, and Google is also getting in on the action, although they're not advanced enough to have a field trial yet. <coughs> Um, so we've been following the Human Genome Project right. Two things happened this past month. The first is that the meeting summary from the past May meeting finally came out. Um, so if you're interested, you can look that up. Uh, funny, it seems to be missing a lot of authors. Um, the second thing is they came out with a draft timeline. Um, so this is, they've also rebranded themselves. They're no longer the Human Genome Project, they're the Genome Project. Um, can't imagine why. Um, they said this was always the intent, just to emphasize large genomes, not just human ones. Um, so their current plan in this draft proposal is that next year there will be a phase one pilot project, uh, which is probably going to involve making an ultra-safe human cell line, and also a major effort to engage with representative members of the public, whatever that means. Uh, the phase two they have in mind will start in five years. They'll start synthesizing a large genome. And what that large genome will be might depend a little bit on the representative members of the public. So they're accepting proposals. Uh, you may be invited. There's been an incredible lack of transparency, even from many of the people who attended the original meeting have somehow been pushed out. Um, the online paper is supposed to be a draft, but isn't labeled a draft and may be updated depending on feedback from everyone else. And the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for May 2017. Again, invitation only to discuss proposals and choose a phase one project. So we'll see where this goes, but <coughs> there's been some, some movement here. Um, so iGEM happened, lots of interesting things there. Uh, and also, Drew Endy's group uh, started this BioNet thing. Uh, the idea is it's an open technology platform for peer-to-peer -peer exchange and provenance tracking of biomaterials and associated data, which basically means they want a scalable peer-to-peer -peer exchange where you share your constructs. Uh, they want to reduce costs. They want to use modern IT and open source automation. And then they're also working on this new uh, property rights framework. So the idea is you don't have to pay for using the same thing. You can, you can share it. So that's exciting. We'll see where that goes. Um, so DARPA a while ago gave Harvard, the Wies Institute, $37 million so that they could build 10 organs on a single chip to test drugs. And they've actually done a pretty good job here. Um, uh, the heart is the most complicated organ they've managed to build, but they've also done lungs, tongues, and intestines. Um, so they actually print cell culture onto a, a, a chip, but they also include sensors built in. So instead of using like ultra high speed photography or trying to stick electrodes in just the right place, they're actually building them into the organ and can, can measure um, much more easily what the response of the organ is. Uh, so the Wies Institute has now spun off Emulate, the company that makes these organ chips for drug testing. Um, and the big thing here is that they're customizable, so they can do 
different disease states, they can do um, different genotypes, etc. So uh, we've talked in the past about how Monsanto and various companies have always promised that they're going to improve yields and never have to date. Uh, that may be changing soon. Um, the UK researchers in this study are applying for field trials in the spring of 2017. They actually took the SBPase uh, enzyme in the Calvin cycle, which is a limiting step in carbon fixation, um, and they overexpressed it somewhere between one and six copies. They didn't say which which one actually worked best, but um, so in the greenhouse, this improves yields by 15 to 20 percent. Not quite sure what it'll do in the field, but that uh, will happen in spring 2017. This is in an antiquated strain of wheat, so um, in order to get this like into actual commercial production, they're going to have to do the same modification or a similar one in a commercial strain of wheat, but uh, we'll see where this goes. And now, uh, primary research. Uh, so we've looked at bacteria, rodents, and all these uh, photoactivatable things. This one is a split uh, RNA polymerase here. Uh, they've shown three different ways that you can use photoactivatable domains to make it light responsive. So it's a photoactivatable genetics switch. This one was kind of cool. So we've talked about using directed evolution where you mutagenize something, find variants that work best. Um, this one actually allows you to do in vivo direct evolution by targeting mutations to a very specific site. So using DCAS9, you bind to your, uh, direct your guide RNA to your target, and then you <coughs> recruit this um, cytidine diam uh, diamidase to hypermutate this uh, region. And they use this to do a variety of things, but also to um, find drug resistance mutations in, in specific cancer targets. And finally, our very own Leonard Lab uh, has published a MESA work here. Uh, so they made split biosensors that can be reconstituted to uh, target a zinc figure nuclease to uh, uh, transcription. So congratulations to the Leonard Lab on the publication. Uh, and a few announcements. Published. If you have published in the past month, Please let us know so we can feature you. Stand up here and, and butcher your research and embarrass you. Um, <laughs> but really, please contact us so we can congratulate you. Um, the BTP is bringing in a guest speaker, Keith Turner, from Monsanto. He's giving a talk about computational biology. Uh, December 7th at 12 p.m. Does anyone know where? Stay tuned. Um, but we've also scheduled a, a Q&A with him, kind of a roundtable discussion. <coughs> Uh, also to be announced, so keep an eye out for that December 7th. And finally, um, we're looking for people who want to get invested, take over for us, uh, uh, determine the future direction of the, of the group, or if you've got a project you're particularly interested in. Um, so come talk to Isaac, Joe, me, uh, Weston's not here right now. Uh, if you're interested, pitch a project, uh, come take over for us. You get to decide what flavors of pizza. So. Uh, yeah, let us know. And now, uh, Quentin. Ooh.